this historic church in Virginia, where George Washington worshipped for about 20 years. They've got the pew that he actually worshipped in. There was a plaque on it. They're taking it down because they think this is going to upset some people. Uh, people are not going to feel welcome or comfortable in Christ church. Who better to talk about this than the man who wrote the book on George Washington and now has a new book on Andrew Jackson. You see it right there. Andrew Jackson and the Miracle of New Orleans. Brian, kill me. Brian, I've been saying all morning, every time you tease me and I'm in Washington State, I've never met him in person. So I, they had me saying that about you so we could finally meet, and you're not even here. You're in Washington. It's unbelievable, but I am going through your stuff here, Ed, uh, so I'm able to go <laughs> through your office. Yeah, right. be careful of that. And as Abby knows, you're, most people are afraid to go in my office, so no one's going to go <laughs> in there. I didn't even it's know you had scary. one, Brian. Right, there are <laughs> probably better. So, but you wrote but the book on George Washington, and the president said it, and he took a lot of grief at, at that point. We should point out, obviously, the context. That news conference, he said other things that were highly controversial about, you know, good people on both sides and all of that. But that specific moment about the monuments, he was criticized for that as well. And then here we are, people are talking about tearing down George Washington. Yeah, and, you know, this is a subject that is white hot in America, pun intended, <laughs> and because of the fact that there's slavery and we're looking back, I think Confederate statues in Washington and Jefferson are two separate conversations. However, if you were talking about George Washington, we are an arrogant generation who want to put today's values on people that lived over 200 years ago. And just ask yourself this, whatever you think of our country, what would the world be like without it? Because without George Washington, we would not have the United States of America, Thomas Jefferson. And right now, everyone feels as though they can attack what they did. They're not on those pedestals. They're not recognized for being perfect people. They're recognized being impactful people of their times, worthy of remembrance. And my goodness, is George, if George Washington is not worthy of remembrance. <laughs> I don't know who is. Well, and Brian, you are such a big uh, believer in our history and where we came from, and that's why you've written these books, this new one on Andrew Jackson. It makes you wonder what kind of world some of these people want us to be living in if we were to tear everything down and forget our entire past and where we yeah. came from and how we came to be and the lessons that we learned along the way. I mean, I feel like you are the perfect voice against all of that, of it how end? important yeah. history is. But how, but how smart was President Trump? He knows exactly. And by the way, I'm getting in these conversations a lot when I go on the tours or I speak to people. They'll put their hands up and say, Andrew Jackson had slaves. Thomas Jefferson had slaves. And that's true. And as Winston Groom wrote, and all these biographies I studied to put these together, he said, look, am I proud that my, uh, my ancestors owned uh, slaves? Of course not. But I am also not arrogant enough to think that I'm going to put my values of today on people that lived 200 plus years ago. Meanwhile, do you think the United States of America America just forming into a nation had the market cornered on slavery. It was happening with all creeds and colors in all continents at that time. So I just think it's an issue that Condoleezza Rice, when she was on our couch and she was coming through a book tour a couple of months ago, I asked her that question. And of course, as an African American who grew up in the South and became one of the most powerful, mm -hmm. respected people in the country, I thought she'd be perfect one to answer mm -hmm. it. Here's what she said. I am a, a firm believer in keep your history before you. And so I don't actually want to rename things that were named for slave owners. I want us to have to look at those names and recognize what they did and be able to tell our kids what they did and for them to have a sense of their own history. When you start wiping out your history, sanitizing your right. history to make you feel better, it's a bad thing. But let me just say one thing about our Constitution. That Constitution originally counted my ancestors as three-fifths of a man. Mm -hmm. And then in 1952, my father had trouble registering to vote in Birmingham, Alabama. And then in 2005, I stood in the Ben Franklin Room, one of our founders. Mm -hmm. I took an oath of office to that same mm -hmm. Constitution, and it was administered by a Jewish woman Supreme Court justice. That's the story of America. Wow. Great Be powerful. Brian, it makes you wonder why she, she hasn't run for office. Well, it makes you wonder a lot of things, but I just think it shows we're a country that constantly corrects and gets better, yeah. and, we're, and we're honest enough with ourselves to know we're going to get better, but not divorce where we came from. What do you, want, Andrew, what do you want people to know about Andrew Jackson? What, what's new here that you really want to bring? Well, well, Pete, I think you especially can relate to this. What Andrew Jackson did is he grew up in, as an orphan. At 13, he had no parents, no family. And instead of saying, I don't want to matter, he said, I'm going to make sure the world knows I lived. And he ends up becoming a lawyer, a judge, an attorney general, a congressman, a senator, a two-term president. But I focused on his years as a major general. Mm. And I went out to the field. The Battle of New Orleans is the name of the book. And the miracle that took place, there's no doubt in my mind, it happened. We're outmanned, outnumbered. We had the finest infantry in the world 
Israel coming at us, invading our country. And Andrew Jackson, in three weeks, put together an army that stopped them in their tracks. Napoleon couldn't do it. They didn't. I want you guys to see what the battlefield looked like, because thanks to people like Teddy Roosevelt, he made sure our history uh, still existed as it was back then. Take a look at a package that's now on FoxandFriends.com. Here's just a little bit of it. This protection, this wall was built in a matter of weeks, miles long to protect Andrew Jackson and the American troops. Over there were thousands of British troops. What they wanted, that was New Orleans. What's at stake? The future of the country. His mishmash of troops that comes in, part Choctaw Indians, Kentucky and Tennessee militia, Beals, rifles and free men of color, they're not going to go out and engage the British. Jackson knows that would be suicidal. Any expert would tell you Jackson's ragtag army would need a miracle to stop the the British from spending Christmas on Bourbon Street, and Jackson knew just where to go to ask for it. Why would I be outside a convent when I'm trying to tell the Battle of New Orleans? Because this isn't just any convent. This is the home of the Ursuline nuns. It dates back hundreds of years. They prayed for Jackson's success. And among the people who think that these nuns brought him a miraculous victory, Major General Andrew Jackson himself. Mm, wow. Cool stuff. Compelling. Man. And you're in D.C. The reason you're in D.C. is because you're, uh, you're, you're on your book tour as well, right? To be away from us, right. Pete. Yeah, that, that's a little bit, and not to meet Ed Henry. <laughs> I'm Barnes & Noble in a few hours at 1. I get a chance to meet the people in Tyson's Corner. Normally, I'm, I'm running soccer tournaments there. Yeah. And then over to Fredericksburg, where George Washington was actually born, and they're reconstructing his birth house. Uh, and you get to see who he is. Fredericksburg, Virginia, uh, tonight. And then uh, back home tomorrow, and I'll be sitting in your seat on Monday. Yeah. And uh, I get to see, can I end with this one quote? Yes, he says this, I thank God, Andrew Jackson, that my life has been spent in a land of liberty and that has given me a, a heart to love my country with the affection of a son and a son to his country and a father to his people. This guy bled red, white, and blue. Not a perfect person, but man, did he matter. Yeah. That's really awesome. I guess, you know, we're getting close uh, to Thanksgiving. Almost another year that I won't meet you, Brian, in person. Maybe 20. I think it's best. I think it's best. <laughs> that might be better for all of us. I don't know for who. Well Brian, done, sir. really well done. Thank you for, for reminding us Congrats how important on the book. history is. Thanks, guys.